The new piece, the latest of my symphonies, number 10, I got the idea, because Papano is involved in part, to do something Italian. And I spent most of last year in Italy anyway. And I've always been interested in architecture, and particularly in the great 17th century Roman architect, Francesco Borromini. And this work is based on him and his work, and it presents an occasion for a great deal of drama because he attempted to commit suicide by falling on his sword when he was in a big, big depression, but managed to survive for a couple of days and did a last testament. So at the end of the work, towards the end, I've set part of that very dramatically for the baritone soloist. And in case you get depressed by that, the chorus is intoning the names of some of the wonderful churches and other buildings that he left behind in Rome, which were a testament of a much, much greater value, so positive indeed that he left that wonderful legacy. And before that, with the chorus, I've set a wonderful poem by Giacomo Leopardi called A se stesso to himself, which expresses exactly the same emotions of despair and near suicide as the Borromini text, but in a wonderful, very condensed, powerful, poetic way. And in most of the piece, I've been trying to do something of the equivalent of making Borromini churches. <laughs> and I've got two attempts at this in the first section and the second section uh, to make pieces of architecture in music which relate somehow to what he did in space. He was great at making a small space look very big. And you can't perhaps do that with a big orchestra. It's already very big. Uh, and early in the work, I've set a scurrilous, anonymous sonnet that was written against Borromini and his architecture, saying, oh, he thinks he's like Bernini, but he's not really fit to do architecture. He should be a manual laborer in a building. He builds things which are like rat holes and uh, uh, underground caverns and whatever, really goes for him. And it's very funny, and um, he got a lot of that, and I suppose it contributed to his depressions. I think my definition of a symphony would be to do with the intensity of the musical thought. I remember when I wrote my first symphony a lot of years ago, a few people, and including the great critic Hans Keller, said this is not a symphony because it doesn't have any development. And I had transformation sections where the material slowly transforms into something else instead of the way that a German-Austrian uh, symphonist would chop the material up in the development, reassemble it, have a dominant pedal and go back to the recapitulation of the first subject. Uh, very different, but the musical thought is just as intense. And of course what a composer has called a symphony, or... Um, a symphonic study, or a concerto, or a sonata, or a string quartet, has been changing all the time. And I think that has transformations right through history that you can't just stop and say, oh, this isn't a symphony. Of course it changes. I was struggling with leukemia, and I made the point of getting up. Whenever I felt well enough, at 7 o'clock, I was at that table writing this symphony. And I think it pulled me through. It really did. Uh, I had to make a huge effort, but um, I'm doing fine. I still can't believe it, that I'm alive. I was given six weeks maximum if I didn't go into hospital. And I pinch myself every day. Come on, you're alive.